Welcome back. You're watching Sports Tonight. We're broadcasting live from Channels TV, Sports Center in Lagos, Nigeria. Taking a look at uh, some trending sports and stories coming down in our world of sports. Let's just uh, continue where we stop with the Nigerian Women's Premier League Super 4. We told you the exciting times we're having with women's football in the country. 14 weeks of football was played. Women's Football League. No walkovers. No much complaints about officiating. Coaches are having a beautiful time. Even the teams that didn't make it to the Super 4, they are saying, look, we Love was happening yeah. with women's football in the country. Aisha Falade, she is the chairperson of the Nigerian Women's Premier League. She's excited also, but she knows that with these, they need to sustain the momentum. Let's listen to our right back. Don't go anywhere. Uh, you know, when you have uh, new innovations, the issue of compliance becomes difficult. Once we were able to explain to them what the vision was, it was easy for them to comply. And uh, so we are very thankful to the clubs. Uh, the Nigeria Women Football League Board have also been very supportive because these are men and women of a uh, uh, track record also in women's football. So everything came together to work for the good of the season. And as from next season, we just hope that now that we have uh, been able to uh, put everything together as a, as a package, uh, the brands will begin to see that indeed there are opportunities in the women's game. That uh, for any brand, once the assets which the women uh, uh, bring to the brand, which is uh, an invaluable asset, and that uh, once you get the women, you have, you have the family, and the family is the core of our, uh, our motto for women football now. Get the, uh, the girl child to go to school, get the girl child to be involved in entrepreneurship, get the girl child to see that um, uh, there's life beyond playing football, and um, also know that uh, for the family, this is a time, this is a platform for you to bring back uh, the family. I want to see next season where families will come to watch the women's game and come and enjoy, you know, and see beautiful football being played by beautiful young women. To me, that will be the day. And then when we see one or two uh, support partners or sponsors also come to identify with us, there's a lot of room here. And I cannot end this interview without saying a big thank you to Edo State, the Governor uh, Godwin Obaseki, his Deputy Right Honorable Philip Schweibo, and the good people of Edo State that in Benin City, the Super 4 is not only going to be a celebration of women's football, it's going to be a celebration of family, it's going to be a celebration of the girl child, and education, and entrepreneurship, and empowerment, and uh, once they have been able to give us, uh, give us the facility and the backing that we need, we want to assure them that uh, we will not disappoint, uh, though we see women's football like they never before uh, uh, seen it in the Super 4. So, what, are, what else can we say? What else can we say? Look, that's what we're talking about, branding. Well, she, look, she says she loves what she's seen. Exactly. And it was collective responsibility that brought them to where they are now. We can use football yeah. to empower the girl child. Yeah. Let them understand the essence of education and football. She mentioned entrepreneurship she also. Has, it's a total package. She has said. turned it into you know, a philosophy, an idea, more or less. You know, and uh, what she's putting out there is not just football, mm. but a total package. Mm. Because you're looking at the girl child education, you're looking at, she's just expanding the entire concept. You're moving it to the family setting. Just, just, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't have said it better, quite frankly. And uh, the way she's going about it, it's hard not to see, it's hard to see this brand not succeeding, really, mm. because it's, it's, it's very, very palatable, very good to look at, very, very attractive, mm. you know, to, to any brand that wants to buy into it. And I just, just love the, the enthusiasm, the idea that has gone into it, the concept behind it. And uh, quite frankly, Aisha Faludi really thumbs up for a great job. Okay, so it's not just um, administration that brought women's football to the level that we, we, we're seeing it now. Uh, the coaches played a role. The players also played a role. The media yeah. also played an important role, and that's what Aisha was trying to say, that if everybody comes together, I will become a powerful force. Let's listen to uh, the coaches. The, the coaches are, are talking tough. Everyone says they will win the Super Bowl, <laughs> but hello, we're just going to get one winner. Let's listen to the coaches. When we come back, uh, we have updates coming from the Wrestling Federation. I must tell you, it's been encouraging. There's a lot of improvement, organized, I mean, refereeing. I've never seen, got any cause to complain. So we, we are really happy the way things are going. There's no intimidation. The four teams are good enough. We have four good teams that have got no, uh, there's no, the margin between the four teams are not wide. So I think we are, we are good enough. We are good enough to, to play among them. We are good enough to, to win the league. 
the end that justifies them is not the beginning. I know we didn't start well. We know we didn't start well, but at the end, <laughs> it was justified in me. It's not the beginning. They said better is a thing, the end of a thing than the beginning. So that is what I believe. I'm the only female, so it does not intimidate me. Even when I was in my course, I was the only female as well. So that does not move me. <laughs> From 2014 to date, we've kept a consistency. That's why we're here today. Here's with, with the whole publicity that female football is having now and the organization, I'm telling you, it is a place that allows for growth and showman of talentship, and which is very good. It's football. Sometimes we lose. Sometimes we win. Sometimes we draw. Those are the three things. So whichever way it comes, the worst one is the, lose, is the losing. It's only draws until we lost one and then draw one. That makes us where we are today. But you see, at that level, this is a different ball game altogether. This is Super 4, so just have to think of how to put everything right. It's a good tournament. The four teams are good teams in the country. But I, one thing I know, the champion is always a champion. So the first just are So that's it, uh, Coach uh, Edwin Okun. It says champions will be champions. But, but Coach, remember, Rivers Angels got some good competition. Uh, the league, that side, they did top the table. But, but I love the fact that these coaches are talking tough. So it means we're going to have exciting football. It's going to be competitive. A Benin City should turn up for this yeah, one. Definitely. Explosive. Uh, Ebiere Okun. And uh, she's the only female. I, I just wish <laughs> her the best. I hope they won't stifle her. You know, it's not going to be easy. But also really had a credible season, I must say. Mm, you know, they, they topped did, that group. They topped that group and they did mm. very, very well. You can't really count them out. And I know that Rivers enjoys the favorite, if any champion. You know, but they are definitely going to, you know, have to prove their worth in the Super 4. It won't come easy at all. Yeah. So it will come easy. Uh, you also uh, listen to uh, Christopher Danjuma. Yeah. You listen to Clifford uh, Chokuma, uh, the coach of Delta Queens. So uh, everybody, they're ready. Remember, the four teams, Delta Queens, Nassau Amazons, Rivers Angels, and of course, by also Queens, mm -hmm. they will light up Benin City when the NWPL Super 4 uh, commences in that city. So guys, put, put, us, put the date down. Let's, let's come out and give the ladies some love.